What's up you guys? I'm Robbie, that's Travis, and welcome to iRefine Movement episode five. All right, so this is gonna be your episode, you guys. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook if you don't, uh, at Refine Movement, but we asked a question on there, what engine do you think is best to go into 90s Hondas? So what engine swap? We're gonna go through some comments that we got that we felt were really nice to share, and you guys can form your own opinions and drop them down in the comments below. So starting off, this guy is Aaron GD1. He says, I've only had Civic LSI EK3 with a D15 Z6 because it's cheap to run on the street and can be as quick. He says he bought or he beat a Scooby in a golf. <laughs> and then he says uh, he's also had a Civic VTI EK4 with a B16A2 in it, and it would be great for the track because of the power. So yeah, I mean the D15 Z6, that was what the um, the VTEC had on that, right? That was, yeah, he's saying it's be good on the street. Uh, still, maybe maybe the transmission, I guess, wouldn't be the best for the street because it's still those real long gears, right? Like Yeah, I don't know. Is that the one that, I can't remember which one that is. Is it the one that you pulled your transmission from or? Well, I pulled my transmission from a D16 Z6. It was okay. the Del Sol. The Del Sol. But so, uh, Aaron, if you're watching this, like we don't have these versions of these cars in the U.S., so they're not as familiar to us. The D15 Z6, I believe, was the VTEC uh, version of it, so it would have been a the more powerful of the D series at that time. Um, but yeah, so I think it still comes down to the transmission uh, on the D series. That's definitely the the hardest. Or, or the weakest link of that engine, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I mean, but, you're, lo you're low on power, so you need to have something to kind of make up for that. Jump off the line quick. and mm -hmm. But for the streets, yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe from a roll, it's cool. I don't know. Uh, but so then he also says he's had the VTI EK4 with the B16A2, and he recommends that for track. And I, I kind of think that I would agree with that mindset, too, because B16 was always such a high-revving make all your power at the top end engine and on track that's kind of what it's all about right trev yeah i mean i mean that's if you're doing you know road course racing that's what it's all about because you're always in the top end so yeah, right. i mean it's with these honda engines generally the you know bc b series and d series they're not not torquey engines so being on the top end plus you you want the high, high the high horsepower to you know keep you going um you know, on the track. So I think that's right. definitely a good a good point um, by him. Yeah, and no, I agree. B sixteen, not much torque in that. So if it's a if it's a tight kind of street circuit, maybe mm -hmm. that's not the engine. But yeah, for these like like the firm, right. you know, where we go race, like it, it's a pretty wide sweeping turns most of the time. I feel that the higher revving power is definitely what I would want too. So Aaron G D one, thank you so much for your comment, man. Very cool. And Trav, if you want to move on to the next. Next one, uh, I'm going to try to read all these names on the YouTube here, or on the Instagram. Nim, Nim Aim Daros, uh, he says, K-Swap if you can afford it. Um, <laughs> he didn't give a reason why. But... <laughs> he didn't give a reason why, but I think he doesn't really need a reason. You know, yeah. with the K-Series, I think that's always the the question no mark. duh you know yeah that's always the obviously because k series is probably the best honda engine you can get for our cars but you know it's always the price tag right so so trav hold, hold your thoughts on that a bit more at <laughs> yeah. the moment because we do have a couple different k series ones yeah. and uh this next comment that i'm gonna read off <clears throat> is um gets into it a bit further so this guy is a, a guy we follow on instagram very cool uh super clean awesome uh ek9 build you should check out um his name is chatty ek9 uh chad if you're watching what's up man message you a couple times and thank you he does cool talking to you so this is what chatty ek9 has to say i prefer a k swap specifically the k20 it will make 220 wheel horsepower pretty easily on OEM parts, which for me is always best as less parts to worry about getting on the aftermarket companies. Parts are easier to find now, and it's a great track car with good power, but not too much torque, so you get good linear power even out of VTEC. With B-Series, in order to go over 200 horsepower, 
you have to upgrade a lot of stuff from OEM, which is costly, and you run the risk of not being installed, or you run the risk of something not being installed properly. He put the K20 in his EK9 and has been tracking it for four years now, he says. So he's never pulled the engine. He's only pulled the gearbox once so that he could change out the clutch. Uh, he says the initial cost of getting into the K-Series is high, but that in his opinion, it's just maintenance after that. He says if you want a naturally aspirated car making over 200 horsepower, then the K20 is a great platform, and it's also lighter, it's also lighter than the B18, he says. Hmm. So there's, there's a lot to unpack there. A lot of really, yeah. I think, solid points uh trev do you have any initial thoughts there um i mean i think him do it you know he a lot of guys i think talk about k-swaps and they haven't done them or driven them or whatever but obviously he has experience he knows about the swap and what you can get out of it and i do think he is is very you know he's on the mark here with you know you can get good power out of the k-series in regards to um you know versus the b series you know i think the b series is just an older engine you know it, it it's not as it's it's not as designed as well as the k series because obviously the k series came after you know honda keeps getting better and better at making engines because that's what right you know they've learned from their mistakes or whatever but um i do think he is pretty right on the mark i mean what do you think about his comment you know honestly i was like man like you know, man, this makes the K series sound like the only option, like <laughs> right. in a way, you know, like it's like because you guys got to think about it from Trav and I's point of view. We still have the original D series that came in our cars, and of course, we want to do engine swaps, like that's gonna happen. We're not there yet, so hold your pants on, but you know, it's gonna happen. And I really like the way Chatty pointed out that yes, the initial cost is high, but once it's in there, it's in there. And then it's just maintenance, and it's a newer engine. He says it's lighter. Uh, obviously, the K-Series, it's no secret that that's probably the best four-cylinder Honda's ever made in terms of strength and power output and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it really was like, you know, wow, yeah, that, that sounds awesome, man. Um, I don't, I can't really speak to what he said about the B-Series and upgrading and maybe it not being as reliable. I obviously don't know about that. I've never owned that. But I can't imagine that throwing bolt-ons on a B-Series is going to make it unreliable and crazy. Like, that doesn't seem maybe as right to me. Um, but, you know, I talked to this guy a bit more in the um, in the messages on Instagram, you guys, and... He had a lot of really good information to give me, and I'm not gonna like say the numbers and stuff that he said was what he used to get his K-Series into his car, but he, it, they seemed respectable, is what I'll say. Not, not crazy, like I was expecting some big numbers, you know, like $10,000 or something like that. It wasn't anywhere near that. Um, but he also said to me that he spent maybe a little more than he even wanted to, and if he would have done it again now, he would have done some different things. Like, I think he went and got the K-Pro, um, what, the ECU unit and stuff. And he was saying, like, oh, maybe I would just take um, the standard ECU and go send it to Honda, that kind of stuff. So he said there are, there are different things that he would do different to lower the cost. Um, I think what I wanted to say about this is that... I think this can be a cheaper swap now if you buy the engine cheaper. So what Travis and I always do is we look at like H Motors and all these places or these, we look at these motor companies where you can buy them with their super low miles, you know, um, and you'll spend four to what, $5,000 buying a K20 and a K series engine. So if, but if you're buying it secondhand and you know it's reliable and good, it could be worth it, right, Trev? I think so. I think it's starting to change my mind because I think a lot of guys always talk about K-Series being ch cheaper than they, they think, but I always think of H-Motors and, you know, it's a lot of money and um, I think 
if you get a motor with 150,000 miles, you can, it, it's okay. It's a Honda motor. The D series I'm running has got 200,000, over 200,000 miles. And you're ripping that thing. I'm still, it <laughs> turns on like a dime every time. I, right. I, I'm still surprised at that engine. So I think, you know, getting a, a gently used engine, um, even one that's got some miles is, is okay. We've seen on the forums, like if you have your local Facebook forums up, like we've seen on our local forums, you know, long blocks going for 600 bucks. Um, I think definitely where the cost is going to come in is that all those auxiliary parts that you need, like the mounts and the axles and the header, you know, because all that is different from a B series, just the way the engine sits in the bay is totally different than the B series. It's reversed. Right. Yeah, I mean, you got to get a lot of parts to get the engine in our cars because it wasn't designed for that. So that's where some of the costs, I think, comes in. So if you can get the engine on on the cheap, you know, then you can, you know, you know, lower your costs substantially. So there's a couple more with K-Series. Obviously, people recommended them. So we'll get to a few more points here in a minute. Um, <laughs> the next comment... Uh, so chatty ek9 thank you so much man like I, I really enjoyed talking to you and this was a, a really solid comment man got us thinking for sure uh, so the next comment on here is from Cy underscore 789 <laughs> he i don't know if he really read what i was saying in the post because he said add a turbo and blah <laughs> so yeah yeah cool man but uh yeah it's not an engine swap <laughs> Yeah, that's that. I think that's some Honda guy's uh, answer to everything. Just add a turbo. Add a turbo. Add a turbo. Add a turbo. Turbo the D series till it blows up. That's pretty common. The right? only thing I can say to that is that you know, when you you can add a turbo to anything, but I think you may, if you do it right, you're gonna have the cost of an engine swap. So it's like, could be true. WAP801 says, B18, C1, end of story. <laughs> hey, well, I will give him credit. I've always dreamed of putting a, this is the Type R, uh, Integra Type R engine uh, in my car. Um, I guess it's always been a dream of mine. They are pretty pricey, but I'd say it's the king of the B, B series, you know, most power. And it's in the Integra Type R. I mean, it's a beautiful, amazing car. So Right. And supposedly the best front-wheel drive handling car of mm. its era. Of anyway, its era, right? yeah. From the factory. So I think that that, that engine and, and any 90s you know honda is gonna be awesome right it's just gonna it's just gonna bolt in easy and it's yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the thing i think King between series right i think between k series and b series is that putting the engine in is going to be a lot easier with b series because our sure. cars are you know set up to have that engine so right. um it definitely would be worth it if the price wasn't so high uh, I'm not going to read this guy's name because it's pretty crazy. It looks like Cru Cruise and Grizzly CR2. He mentioned the J-Series engines, much more room to grow and unique, also cheaper than K and B, which I definitely can see that because, you know, they're not as popular for swaps, so the demand is very low. Um, engine-wise. Engine-wise, you know, so uh, that that the engine will be cheap, but you get... I mean, that's, those were in the Accords and, you know, um, the Pilots and stuff like that. So they, they, they're they six cylinders, so that's a V6. Um, you're going to get a lot of power, a lot of torque, um, especially for our cars. But I think, you know, it's cheaper, but is it cheaper because after you have to get it in the car, that's where I think your money is going to start going out the window because... <laughs> axles and axles special axles you know special mounts those things are gonna yeah. in the car it's difficult to get these in our cars because eg and, and kek because the it's so tall it's a tall it's a big engine you always see the cutout right right a lot of guys have to cut their hoods and that's kind of you know that's its own look in it in itself and you know nobody not all everybody wants to do that so yeah. to get the hood to close you got to do special stuff so it, it I think it's a great, unique option. Plus, you're going to get a lot of power, but it's a heavy engine. It's going to be costly to get in the car, and it's it's not going to be easy. So, you're going to have so, to have some skills, maybe. <clears throat> so, so what's your opinion then on what this engine would be used for? Uh, drag, street, drag. Well, um, 
I know there's a guy on Instagram that I've seen who actually has a track EG Coupe and it is super awesome because he does <laughs> road course and this thing's got a full J series in it and he tracks this car a lot. So uh, I'm I'm impressed by that car. But yeah, because how many of those do you see? Like, you don't you don't see the only those. One. <laughs> I, you don't see those track that we've seen. Right. I think this could definitely be a good swap for for doing drag racing. I mean, in my opinion. I'm not a drag racer, so I don't know, but sure. I mean, that's what I would assume you would do it for. I, I would assume that too, and I, I think more so even the street, mm -hmm. uh, because at least as far as drag cars that I have seen, and again, not that I like follow that hard, so if there are some, I'm sure there are, you right. can show us, that's fine. But I think for the street especially, like people want that torque off the line and boom go i don't think it's going to be a high revving engine so mm -hmm. you better get it all done quick in the first 10 <laughs> seconds you better win you know yeah, um, but uh yeah so i could see it as a street motor that mm -hmm. that track car is super interesting it's crazy but uh yeah i could definitely see it as a street uh swap for sure cool. um and so one of the last ones here that we want to talk about was uh itr reason and Erie B04, they both recommended the H series engines, and they both talked about those with uh, S80 transmission, or just, yeah, B16 or S80 transmission. Uh, the one guy, ITR Reason, he's talking about the H2B kit. And our friend uh, Jeremy, uh, he actually has the H2B in his really nice uh, EK uh, hatch uh, with the H2B he just got done this, this past uh, car show season down here in Florida. So, uh, Trav, what do, you, what do you think about the H-Series engines? I mean, I don't know know too much about it. I think the guys who really love it, they really, They're really die love it. hard. Yeah. I mean, because Jeremy is that guy. I think he's yeah. been wanting to do this swap for a long time. Since we've known him, and that's probably yeah. five, six years at least. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think, but it's taken him this long because it, it's not an easy endeavor. You know, it's not cheap. And, you know, I think he's still having some, like, little bit, little problems here and there of getting the car to run with the you know, cooling right like wasn't cooling. it the radiator or something i think was... something with the radiator he was having i mean who knows it's not really the engine's problem i mean that's the cooling system so sure. maybe there's an issue with how uh i think he's having an issue with how the air is there's air trapped in the system so hmm. um but yeah i think it's a really unique swap i think it's almost on the par with the j series kind of thing yeah i agree it's, it's definitely easier um because those these motors come out of the prelude but I think they're heavier um, than most B series, and um, it's a little bit problematic getting them in our cars. But it's definitely cool. You get you're gonna get a torquier four series or four cylinder engine. So yeah, you know I think that's that's pretty sweet. So I mean if you can get it to work, go for it. Well, and if you are a Prelude guy, you know we're talking about '90s chassis in general, so mm -hmm. not just Civics. But yeah. I mean, so if you're a Prelude guy, obviously this is the engine you're gonna put in there. But mm -hmm. like putting it in like a EG or an EK or something like that. Like, yeah, I, I agree with Travis. Like it is, it is a heavier engine. It probably will cost more, especially the H2B. If you go just the H, H series engine, it probably wouldn't cost as much, but it is still the special mounts, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've heard different things about the H series. Like, I think some people are saying like, um, the internals aren't as strong as like the B series I've heard before. Yeah. I've heard these engines are maybe less reliable than mm -hmm. the B series. Again, that's just what I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I don't, I don't know. It, it the Prelude was a sporty car, but I feel like it was never quite given the same attention as the Civics and the B series. Right. So that engine just seems like almost like it was a little overlooked, in my opinion. All right, maybe like a little bit fast paced and i think that and that car and that engine almost seem like street car like this is a very you know very much so street scene street car you know light to light kind of thing and absolutely agree which is cool you know if that's what you want i always like the last generation of, of preludes myself the way they yeah, look yeah they look awesome mm -hmm. so it's a cool car cool interesting motor so i kind of just wanted to conclude this in the saying that you know travis and i are not in the market currently to buy an engine but you know this is something that's always on our mind and what do we do you know what 
what are we going to do for a swap? <laughs> and all of these are options. And that's, you know, we wanted to kind of just get your guys' opinion. And mm. I definitely did think like, oh, K-Series is going to be the ultimate big winner. Everyone wants that. Um, but, you know, I was surprised. There was a lot of B-Series. And surprisingly, the H-Series and J-Series made it on there a couple times on this list, too. Uh, from mm. different people t uh, talking about them. But so... Yeah, you know, who knows, man, it, opinions can change day to day, you know, you all have to know that, like, you'll be gung-ho on one path, and you're like, well, maybe I'll change my path and do this. After reading Chatty EK9's thing, I'm like, man, the K-Series sounds, like, <laughs> totally amazing, and yeah. yeah, it's more money to get into, and this and that. I don't know, you know, but the ease of the B series is always still like, ah, that's really attractive because the price isn't as high, it bolts in easier, mm. all this kind of stuff. Like, ah, it, it it totally messes with the mind, man. But uh, what what do you think, Trav? I mean, I think that's exactly where I'm at. I always think about these all this stuff all the time because my motor is got a lot of miles, you know, it, it has a lot, and it's not going to last forever. So, you know, especially when we're going to the track. So I think. I'm trying to think of a way, the best option, and there's really not a quite, uh, there's not an answer. You know, no, there isn't, because either you're going to, no matter what, you're going to spend the money, but mm. it, it's almost like you have to have that checklist, right? Like, do I want this just to be easy and reliable, mm -hmm. bottom line? Right. Am I worried about the price, bottom line? Right. Uh, is horsepower and torque numbers my biggest priority? Like, it, it, there's so many factors, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I don't know, for me, it's probably going to be the best bang for my buck, you know, like, and what's going to give me, you know, I, I think the most track days, you know, that's what's... I don't want to throw money into a motor and then, oh, it's dead and after a track day. So please subscribe, like, share, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully we'll be at the track next episode. We're not sure yet. The weather is not looking good here in Florida, so we'll keep you up to date. But uh, thanks for watching.